This is the VIP. Looks different, feels different, and definitely charges different. Welcome to the review of the Infinix Note 12 VIP. I don't know what the VIP stands for. In the box, you still get all the accessories, a glass screen protector, and even wired earphones. Infinix are still one of the very few smartphone brands given actual accessories, with one being of significant note. <laughs> the 120 watt hypercharger, which can go from zero to 100% in 17 minutes. But we'll talk about that a bit later. Then of course, we have the phone itself. It has a bit of weight to it, about 198 grams, but that's a good thing because it makes it feel premium. It's also very boxy, its sides are pretty thin at 7.89 millimeters, and it's so flat that it can stand on its own. It feels just like the Zero X from last year. I was a big fan of that then, and I can say the same thing about this. It's one of those phone designs that are just in your face, and that's mostly thanks to the camera module. It's glossy while the rest of the phone is matte, and I'm definitely fine with that. It has a somewhat tiny bump, and because of how it's centered and how big the camera module is, it won't rock on a table. I really do dig the design, but I just can't choose between the two colors available. Like, which one looks nicer? What do you think? Now let's just do a quick tour around the phone. At the bottom we have the headphone jack, one of two mics, a Type-C port, and one of two speakers. So two speakers on here, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, at the top we have the second speaker as well as the second mic. On the right side of the phone we have the power button as well as the volume up and down keys. And on the left side we have the SIM card tray, which by the way can hold two 4G SIMs as well as a micro SD card. At the front of the phone, we have the hole punch cutter housing obviously the selfie camera and above that we have the earpiece. And really one really nice touch that they added was reducing the bottom chin. I've complained a lot about that bottom chin and they're finally doing it. The goal is to have a perfectly symmetrical top and bottom bezel and we are really close. The front looks way nicer now because of the amount of bezels and the quality of the display. It's a 6.7 inch 1080p AMOLED display. It also has a 120 hertz refresh rate. Just chill, there are more numbers. Over 400,000 to one contrast ratio, 1.07 billion 10 bit color depth, 100% DCI P3 color gamut, it has a 93.1% screen to body ratio and always on display because it's AMOLED and also has a low blue light certification. And just like you, I don't know what most of these numbers mean. All I do know is that the display is really good. It looks really nice. You're definitely going to enjoy watching YouTube videos, which by the way, lets you watch up to 4K. Movies as well would be great on this. Plus, like I said, it does come with dual speakers. So you're really getting a lot here and you still get an eye-friendly display. So officially they ticked all the boxes. It looks so good. Really, the display didn't disappoint. Software as well didn't disappoint. Well, kinda. So you see, we've got Android 12 on here, which is fantastic. It also comes with XOS 10.6, which I believe is the latest. Now we first saw Android 12 on the Hot 11, and now we're seeing it on the Note 12. And yes, we do get some Android 12 features. There are also some visual changes, some improvements to Folax, the voice assistant, but I can't really feel that Android 12 vibe. And I can't say for certain that it would get Android 13 or even any more than that. Now there is also bloatware. And at this point, to be honest, everyone knows how to get rid of them. So yeah, glad we've got Android 12, but we want more. Oh, hello there. I interrupt your regularly scheduled program. Is that, that's how they say it, right? I'm sure you don't know this and neither does he, but I'm racing Fenton from Gadgetsu to 15,000 subscribers. I'm currently behind him now, but I feel like we can catch up and get to 15K before him. So if you want to help me, all you just have to do, yes, you watching this video, is subscribe to the channel. That is, of course, if you're enjoying the video. Now back to the video. The camera module houses the 108 megapixel main camera. 
it looks pretty huge. Alongside that is the 13 megapixel ultra wide sensor and a depth sensor. It also has laser detection autofocus. I'll put up some images now on the screen. These were taken on the Note 12 VIP and honestly, they're really good. Color was totally accurate. It was detailed enough and it was properly exposed. HDR was spot on, it handled dynamic range really well and the 108 megapixel mode also turned out really well. The main camera I think is really good. The ultra wide though, as expected, isn't as good. My main gripe though is with color. It looks dusty, it's kind of brown. It might be just this unit. So I'll update you in the comments if I find any new information. Portrait mode uses the main camera and boy are they good. Color looks good and subject separation is pretty spot on as well. I tried it with the selfie camera and it separated me from the background pretty well. Now the selfie camera is 16 megapixels and although the color isn't as bad as the ultra wide, it's not as good as the main camera, understandably so. I feel it needs a bit more pop in color, but I want you to tell me what you think of the photos. I even took some with low lights make sure you leave a comment. For video on both cameras, it shoots up to 2K, but ultra steady mode is only available in 1080p. Now, I think the rear cameras did a good job, especially with dynamic range. The front camera though, not so much. It struggled to keep my face and the background properly exposed. Like it doesn't completely blow out the sky. I mean, it was really sunny outside. So I think on less sunny days, it should handle dynamic range better. The Helio G96 is the chipset of choice here. Now, frankly, I wasn't expecting this because the G96 doesn't support 5G. Yes, I was expecting a 5G Note 12, but it's actually quite capable, as we know. Multitasking was amazing on here. Gaming would be too. Now, I might not be the best person to talk about gaming because I only play FIFA Mobile and Rebel Racing, but most games would work on here. It might not be at the best of best settings, but truly who's expecting that? But like I said, you would play most games on here. It comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 120 gigabytes of storage. And it still has an option for extended RAM of up to five gigabytes, making it 13. Okay, that's a lot of RAM. And yeah, like I said earlier, multitasking on here is just great. You can leave apps, multiple of them, and return back without them restarting. And I think at this price, that is what we expect. And that is what we get with the Note 12 VIP. One thing I noticed even while typing is the haptic feedback. So yes, even while gaming, you would feel some vibration, which I thought was pretty cool. It also stayed pretty cool most of the time, thanks to its nine layer graphene cooling system. Cooling is definitely super important, especially in this phone because of its ridiculous 120 watt fast charging, which as I mentioned, goes from zero to 100 in 17 minutes. Okay, it's a dual cell battery, so it's charging the two at the same time. So that's how it's able to charge this phone so quickly. But in order for the phone to, you know, not... <laughs> yes, I did that with my mouth. <laughs> They had to put some measures in place. Now we've got 103 protection features spanning from the charger to the circuit to the battery. We've also got 18 thermal sensors which monitor the device's temperature to make sure you charge safely. And in terms of how it affects your battery health, well, you should get about 800 charging cycles, which is about two years. And at that time, your battery health would be about 85%. Uh, which is kind of industry standard. So clearly they've thought about all of this and they've done their homework and research before actually putting this out. So I guess there's nothing to worry about. I think another reason why it charges so quickly is because it's a smaller battery at 4,500 milliamp hours. Now, if you're a heavy user, it would most likely die before the end of the day. But knowing that you can put your phone down to charge and in 15 minutes, you can have hours of screen on time, I think most people wouldn't mind. So yeah, astonishing design, basically perfect display. The main camera is really good, but the ultra wide and selfie still need tweaking. Performance is satisfactory at least. It's perfect for regular people, but no 5G here. And of course, crazy fast charging. All of that for 199,900, which is basically 200,000. So definitely not cheap. 
the exchange rate is not helping at all. So I think the only two things missing would probably be 5G and like the promise of a couple years of software updates. I think that's about it. But boy, our phones getting expensive in Nigeria. But yeah, that's the Note 12 VIP. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you when you see me.